Hello everyone, thank you for joining us Sage here for Calci Media and welcome to another edition of the Executive Corner Expert Talks. In this special edition we'll be shining the spotlight on Imogene Limited. For some background, Imogene Limited on the ASX ticker as IMU is a clinical stage immuno-oncology company involved in developing a range of new and novel immunotherapies that seek to activate a cancer patient's immune system to detect and eliminate tumors. So to find out more about how Imogene is advancing research in their sector, we have invited Imogene Limited's Managing Director and CEO, Leslie Chong. Leslie, welcome to the show. Thanks so much for having me. So glad you could join us today. It's such an exciting time to connect with your company on the news of achieving positive final overall survival results from the phase two study of HERVAX. For those that are not aware of what HERVAX is, could you please help the viewers understand the significance of these results for gastric cancer patients? Sure. So uh, HER2 proliferation or overexpression causes more malignant cells to grow. So roughly about 30% of breast cancer types, as well as about 20% of gastric has HER2 overexpression. And what HERVAX does is it binds to those receptors so that it no longer sends the signal to your malignant cells to multiply. So in effect, having your immune system recognize and then kill the cancer. So Hervax creates antibodies, which is basically drug against that particular malignant target. Essentially, it turns your body into an antibody uh, factory and it manufactures the antibodies because we promote your immune system to do that. That's amazing that you have been able to articulate such a complex process uh, to us in a way that we can understand it so easily. Thank you so much. Imogen has recently hit a milestone with the Cohort Review Committee confirming a higher dose of Hervax, 100 micrograms, to be safe with no serious adverse reactions and no dose limiting toxicities. How could this higher dose help improve the clinical response for Hervax, please? Well, we already saw uh, the phase two study with overall survival, that was with 50 micrograms. So you could imagine you dose 100%, you know, above that, and really get your body to create that much more antibodies against a, a particular target, in this case, the HER2 receptors and still have safety and toxicity profile that looks as good as Hervax. So I'll just go back to that phase two, because what we show was that with the Hervax plus chemo arm versus the standard of care chemo as a control, we show that gastric patients live 5.6 months longer on our drug than they did on chemo. So that is significant because these pop, this population, unfortunately they don't do well. And we also have patients still on the study on the Hervax arm. So, you know, the end of the study uh, data might even look better, but for right now, the, st the statistical cut was here and we've shown an overall survival at 0.585 hazard ratio, which means translates into roughly about 41.5% of survival in our Hervax arm, showing a clear response rate of 5.6 medium overall survival differential. So if we go into this 100 microgram, so we've dose escalated from 50 to 100, that 100 microgram will go into the two phase two studies where we're going into earlier stages of gastric cancer and combining with an anti pdl one called avalumumab. We're also going into a late stage where patients have progressed off of known uh, standard of care therapy, such as even checkpoint inhibitors and Herceptin to go on our study. So we've got two phase two studies happening with our higher dose. So we're quite excited about the outcome of that. Yes, I've definitely noticed Imogene making the news headlines uh, quite a lot recently in the last week. And it's such an intricate system. The dedication your team must be going through to keep achieving these amazing results um, must be at a very high level. 
You also have an active clinical trial of oncolytic virus CheckVac targeting women diagnosed with triple negative breast cancer. How significant is the opportunity of developing this oncolytic virotherapy for the Australian breast cancer market? So triple negative breast cancer is one of those one of the most deadliest breast cancers that you can have. And our oncolytic virus, especially CheckFAC, has not only our, our most profound, prolific oncolytic virus, it has a transgene called PDL1 or a tazoluzumab, where it gives a direct payload of the checkpoint inhibitor to the tumor cell. So you've got a two prong punch. You've got our oncolytic viral therapy replicating. You've got the PDL one invoking more of your immunity. So it's a swath approach to that cell. And we're only in cohort two, and we're already seeing some promising um, signs there. That's great to hear. It sounds like it's such a synergistic therapy that's working with the body's own organic systems. So apart from CheckVac, Imogene is also continuing with the clinical trial of another oncolytic virotherapy called Vaccinia. What are the company's expectations from this clinical trial? I really have high expectations for our Vaccinia. That's the parental virus. It hasn't been attenu attenuated. It has no transgene or anything added to it. So it's just the most powerful oncolytic virus that we have in our pipeline. This is currently in, in cohort one in myriad of uh, solid tumors. So we anticipate that even at a low dose, we might start seeing signals, activity. And then we're also going broader because we're looking not only at intratumoral cancer types, we're also looking at intravenous, so that metastatic setting, and then moving Moving on to a combination. It's an ambitious study, one that um, deserves uh, this attention because our, our oncolytic viral therapy, I think is really going to just wipe away the solid tumors and many, many different tumor types. That's such great news to hear. Uh, the cancer stats are getting better overall in regards to death rates. So thank you so much for the work that you do. The company recently highlighted that it has 100 million Australian dollars in cash, which makes it one of the most financial secure biotechs on the ASX. What, according to you, has been the driving force for this success? Well, I think our company has two products, vaccines, viruses that are already known to be safe. And if you can have the same response rates in cancer patients and you still have safety, it just lends itself for combination. And here at Imaging, we have a sense of urgency and we We've met the milestone. So far, our product has been proven safe as well as efficacious. So you never know what's going to happen in the clinic. You, put, you try to put it in the best clinical development so that your drug shows itself. And so far, um, it's doing exactly what we hope that it would do. So we're meeting our milestones. We're getting things done. We've got you know, an, a, a prolific pipeline with the dream and ambitious to alleviate some sort of cancer type. Um, so I think that's why we're, we're, we've been able to garner a lot of attention and keep momentum going. Yes, I mean, your results must be so stimulating and, and must be the driving force motivating you to continue with your research. The year 2022 seems to be really busy for Imogene with a range of milestones achieved so far as you've just touched on. What does the rest of the calendar year look like in terms of catalysts for the company? What are you most excited about? Well, we've got um, activities across all our assets, all our pipeline, and we're just getting the preclinical data with our combination with CAR-Ts, with cellularity and Eureka. That is uh, very excitingly to be published very soon. And I can't wait to share the data with the world on what our on carlytics our most powerful um, oncolytic virus that has a transgene called CD19. And when you add a CAR T to it in that combination, it's really, it, it, I'm just so thrilled that it's gonna obliterate solid tumor cancers. Um, among other things across all our assets, you'll hear news on CheckFAC, you'll hear news on Vaccinia, further news on Hervax, and of course our PD-1, uh, PD-1 Vax that is in combination and non-small cell lung cancer, where we have some patients um, enjoying that 
complete response, uh, cure, almost a cure now with 19 months of uh, free of disease. We've got some partial responder, some stable disease. So lots of activities there, lots of activities across all our assets. Thank you so much, Leslie. It's, it's like I said in the beginning, it's such an exciting time to be connecting with your company and the work that you're doing. Now, as we close off the discussion, were there any comments you'd like to share with our viewers? Well, I just love that we got this beautiful OS data. Um, even with such small number of patients, we were able to show that Hervax is indeed safe. We added no toxicity to chemo. We added a differential of a medium overall survival of 5.6 months in this population, which is significant. We're moving right along with our oncolytic viral therapy, getting a lot of attention from various different stakeholders. And I'm just pleased as punches that we've got enough money to really on our on our goals of phase ones and phase twos across all our assets. That's great to hear because I know it's not easy to get those certifications of safety. So congratulations and thank you for sharing your news with us today. Thank you so much for having me. Best of luck with the near-term projects and goals. And if you have just joined us, we completed an informative discussion with Leslie Chong, Managing Director and CEO at Imaging Limited. And if you have missed any part of that chat, you can catch the full interview on YouTube via Calkine Media's channel. So please subscribe. I'm Sage here reminding you to stay apprised and invest wise with Calkine. <laughs>